All right, thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. So do us a favor, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell for notifications of videos, which there's a few of them, and of course, participate in the conversation by upvoting the video and commenting down below. I'm here with the interview that I have most wanted to get it on with. John Avery is coming on the show. How you doing, John? I'm fine, man. I'm doing really well. I'm I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm unbelievably excited. You can tell by my voice how excited I am that you are here. Anyway, <laughs> let's go ahead and get started because I know you've heard this from the fan base and everything. The running joke that goes back to Bill Walsh's college football back on the Sega Genesis back in the day. How fast is John Avery fast? Uh, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I try to be faster than the guy that's chasing me, but, um, uh, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I think I'm up as a pretty legit, uh, probably about four, one, seven, four, one, six. I've run that fast on the track. Um, I didn't run track in college cause, uh, Tommy Tupperville said he didn't want to risk me blowing out a hamstring and then me not being able to cover. So I don't know how fast I would have gotten, um, but track, uh, really helped my speed a lot. Even in the uh, combine, the combine, I fell asleep in the end zone, and Fred Taylor and Robert Edwards actually woke me up. Said, "John, it's your turn to run," because I was uh, I was uh, I was just getting tired of waiting on the wide receivers to run. So I had to run from one end of the Indianapolis uh, uh, stadium to the other end, run, run a four two nine, and then I tried to go back to sleep. They're like, "No, you got to run one more time." I'm like, yeah, "I'd rather take a nap." You know what I mean? So I've I've literally woke up and run up. A four two nine, but um, you know, like I said, if those defenders looked like my mother uh, with a belt, I probably would have ran a three eight. So, <laughs> I think we've all been there. We've she, all been true. there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, the Arkansas game is the one that comes to mind first off. Is that ninety seven yard touchdown? Can you like talk about your memory of that game? Because Stuart Patrick says like his nose got broke the play before and he couldn't hardly talk. Um, what, what's your recollection of that play? I remember I called that play. Hmm. I called that play. Uh, hmm. We had the truck symbol. It was like we go hmm. like this, and I'm not trying to show off my arms, but they do the <laughs> we do the, uh, the truck symbol. And because uh, I remember Noel Mazzoni, Coach Mazzoni was like looking at his playbook, and he didn't have a play. For being backed up on the on the uh, goal line like that, and so and me, I'm 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 a competitor. I, you know, I wasn't the, the biggest guy, but my heart was bigger than the stadium. So I looked at him. I said, I said, run truck, and he he just kind of said, go ahead, do what you want to do. You know what I mean? And uh, once I hit that line of scrimmage, Andre Roan came across, uh, and so the guy kind of overplayed it when uh, Andre uh, when Andre came in motion. So when I came through the line, it was a guy coming from the backside. And I've I've learned to make a move on a guy without looking at him. So he thought, because I was looking straight ahead, he thought he had a kill shot. And I made that one plant, and I knew I had to get back straight and so I could eat up the angles because there was guys already about 15, 20 yards away from me. And I'm like, I got to get back straight so I can eat up the angle. And that's what I did. So if you see, I don't run to the sideline. I run straight up the field, and I don't hit the sideline until I'm in the end zone. Hmm. Yeah, it's one of my uh, favorite runs um, because – that rushing yard record was um, at Ole Miss was one that nobody ever hardly could seem to break. There's other schools that like had those long runs all the times, but it seemed like it was like at 87 yards on a fake punt for 50 years at Ole Miss. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and whenever you saw that, and it was just amazing because that was one of the few times that I saw is like once you got in between the defensive line and the linebackers, I was like, oh, he's gone. <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of I saw the playback and I, I remember uh, Tuckville. He's got his hat off and he's rolling his arm like, "Go ahead," you know what I mean? Because <laughs> they, they knew once I got past that first wave, if uh, anybody was out of position, I was just gonna outrun you. Yeah. Now, now let's change gears a little bit to another big play that got, let's say, Alabama called back. Um, because weird <laughs> stuff happens against Alabama, and we're playing Alabama this weekend. So hey, it's you know what? To... I'm going to go ahead and, and put it out on the table, man. Alabama is the luckiest team in the history of college football. I don't know. They, they should change their their mascot 
from an elephant to a leprechaun. You know what I'm saying? They should be the Alabama leprechauns because they have more luck than anybody I've ever seen. And they hit. I was so glad that uh, Tennessee got the got the win because they they deserved it. But there was been uh, so even when we played against them, there have been so many times I watched Alabama and they should have lost, and somehow it just happens. And I'm telling you, that it's a horseshoe inside that football. There's a horseshoe <laughs> in the football. I'm telling you, it got to be. Um, <laughs> It's absolutely nuts, but uh, talk about that kickoff return because the 15-yard... Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. And and how do you win with a guy like Nick Saban? His face is so damn unhappy. You ever see his face? I mean, I make that face after I finish taking a dump. He's got that same face, whether they're winning or losing. It's the same face. How is that encouraging? Okay, <laughs> I, I, let me get off. Okay, I'm done. All right. Okay, so <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I just, I just, I just, oh my God! I, I hate that face. I hate his face. I hate that mm-hmm. face. Uh, I, somebody at least put some clown makeup on him or something. Give him a smile, something. You know what I mean? Anyway, yeah. So uh, it, it's, it's some, it's, his, his face sounds like his his thoughts are aggressive, like Samuel L. Jackson. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know, like he's just cursing and carrying on in his head. I'm like, look at your face. Anyway, okay, so. <laughs> Uh, the um, the kick return. Um, now the, the kick return was crazy because when they kicked it, we were we were behind, and and I I, 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 I think I had a, a fumble, and I was just like, and I was so upset, and I'm like, I just want to get my hands on the ball again, and uh, so when they kicked it to me, I came through the first wave. My guys did a a, a tremendous job of blocking. Like uh, people don't know about how uh, good the special teams guys that uh Ben Craddock and uh, Walt Hill. You know what I mean? Those guys, they I mean, they really went to bat for me on those special teams, man. And um, they they opened up a big hole, and I went through it. But there was a guy trying to have an angle on me, and he had a really good angle. So I said, you know what? I'm going to take him to the altar, but I'm not going to marry him. You know what I mean? So I so I started running to the sideline, and I never I never I didn't even make eye contact with him. And when he got right up on me, I cut back behind him, and he knew he couldn't plant and go because you know I would just run away from him. So he made a big loop. When he made the big loop. I let him turn all the way around, then I cut back again. When I cut back again, the guy hit my shoulder pad. I, I didn't know how close it was. I wasn't going to turn around and you know, take inventory. You know, I just, I just kind of, you know, and, but he hit my shoulder pad, and I'm like, oh, I thought he was on top of me. So I took another step, and I dove. And so when I dove into the end zone, they threw a flag. Hmm. I'm sitting there like, I've seen Alabama spike the ball in the end zone. I've seen them celebrate, do all kind of stuff, and uh, they, they get no repercussions. And, uh, and I, it's sad that it's that lopsided, especially um, when they play the Ole Miss Rebels, man. They really, really it, – it's it's hard not to think that it's a little biased. But, you know, but I'm biased because, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm an Ole Miss Rebel. But, uh, but I, I've seen that stuff firsthand. Like, man, something's not right. I said, something, something, something's wrong with the gumbo. Something's yeah. wrong with the gumbo. I tell people all the time, it's like, if you're coming here expecting something else than that, this is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. It's kind of baked into the title, what's going to happen whenever you come into this show. So if you're expecting something else, I don't know if I can help you. Uh, (laughs) What can you do? (laughs) Yeah, it is what it is. Anyway, before we move on to this week's game, in 97, you had Deuce McAllister, a true freshman Deuce McAllister. Man, let me tell you something. Hold on, man. Before we even get to this, I'm glad you said that name because I've always considered myself the second best running back in Ole Miss history. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Deuce McAllister, when he came in, I said, God Almighty, what? Uh, you know, it, it, it looked like Vikings and and like some African tribal warriors had a baby. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it, I mean, the dude, he, like his size was so imposing. And then he had speed. You know what I mean? And if he learned anything from me, it was to put a little wiggle, you know what I mean, to try to save your body a little bit. But, like, man, like, I was looking like, man, what I wouldn't give to jump in his body and run some touchdowns, man. That kid, um, and he, and all he did was just get better, 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 man. And, like, I, I'm, I'm a fan of Deuce McAllister, even though he was uh, younger than me. That kid was simply amazing. But I'm sorry, go ahead. I had to, I had to get that yeah. on the chat. Yeah, my whole thing is like this This rushing class where in a similar situation with Zach Evans and then Quinshawn Judkins, who's a true freshman, 
the only person that would really know about that, and I said this about to Stuart Patridge, was you guys because you guys two first round backs were in the backfield and talk about what that was like and how you see this class this group being. You know what? I they they're I I like what Coach Kiffin is doing with um, versatility with those guys. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like um you know you, you see them in a, in a, a bunch of different uh, scenarios and they're, they're getting downhill and they're they're making plays. I think that um that that they should spread it out just a little bit more. You know what I mean? Especially when you got it like Jenkins is he hits those lanes really really well. You know what I mean? Then you got and, you, and, and a lot of times when you're running the ball, um you have to you have to understand when people are afraid of you, they are definitely going to do something extra to keep you in the box. They're going to always try to keep you in the box. So if you spread it out where they have to be out the box, that's when you can really hurt them. You know what I mean? Um, the, mm-hmm. You get the, the linemen to widen those splits a little bit. They help create a little bit, some some better lanes. And it's speed. You know, those, those, those running backs have speed and great vision. Let them hit that lane and get past that first wave and start making some plays. You know what I mean? And most times I see some of that big runs, it's really they, they pop out of that crowd because everything, um, they, they find that one crease. But, like, when you have when you spread it out, you got more than one crease. You, you set them up and you put them exactly where you want them to be, and you make the plays. That's what a running back is supposed to do. A running back is supposed to um, maneuver, speed, power, agility. You use all these different attributes to put the defensive players where you want them to be so you can make plays. Yeah. Real quick on on that thing with different lanes and all that. Talk about the difference of being an out on an out the outside zone and the inside zone because that's okay. so big in our offense. Talk uh, about now, the differences there. Now, I'm a, I'm a bit of a uh, what you would call a, a idiot when it comes to uh, <laughs> where you're supposed to go because I've taken the outside zone and gone all the way back the other way. <laughs> I did that against uh, my my junior year. I did that against uh, Arkansas. I took a toss play from that side and took it back all the way around the other way and scored um, up in um, Fayetteville. But um, mm-hmm. when you're running the outside zone, that's supposed to either um, – you can you can stretch the outside zone almost all the way to the sideline before you cut it up. Um, nobody runs the outside zone better than the Denver Broncos. And I, was, I had an opportunity to go in and really, really learn how to run the outside zone up in uh, Denver. But if you watch Terrell Davis or any of those guys, sometimes they can take that outside zone almost to the sideline before they cut it up. And those offensive linemen just keep running. They keep running to help open up the lanes. And the running back just is patient, 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 patient. And then he cuts it up. You know what I mean? It, it, it cuts it up. It, you can strain that thing all the way to the sideline before you cut it up. Now, the inside zone is probably the best. Uh, that's the that's the punish one to run because it can go it can go way out there where the outside zone goes. And it can, all, it can go back door all the way back to the other side behind the tackle. You know what I mean? It just depends on how the defense is playing. You literally get to toy with the defense. That's what we did when we we won the Egg Bowl um, Mm -hmm. with um, when Tua Patrick and Andre Roan and uh, uh, Corey uh, Mm -hmm. secured that victory. But if you watch the way I was running against those guys, they didn't know where I was going. If you look at that game, they had no clue. and, And they had like some of the best defensive players in their history on that team and they could you couldn't give them flashcards to find me you know what i mean they couldn't they couldn't find me anywhere on the field and i mean i so i, I either i would go play sides keep going bounce it outside sometimes I, I would stop cut it back they didn't know what to do i'm pretty sure um some of those guys had to go to a woman's shelter because i was beating up on them so bad out there after, after the game <laughs> i'm sure they had to go they had to go <laughs> to tell their story you know what i mean but i mean but I had to do that because they was they were really good up front. So I had to keep giving them different looks, different things, and that's what um, that's what I think that uh, they need to do with our running backs at Ole Miss is teach them how to give a defense different looks. If you run the ball and you hit, hit that same lane over and over again, how hard is it to figure out where to uh, meet you when you you see certain formations or certain runs? You know what I mean? And so that's that's kind of the art that's kind of I think that's missing right now is the creativity from the running back. I grew up on Barry Sanders. That's why I wore number 20. I grew up on Barry Sanders. Barry Sanders will have negative 20 yards in the first half and then still put up 200 in the second half because you figure a defense out when you get enough uh, reps and enough different types of plays and different formations you get to look at, you figure it out. That's what the running back is supposed to do. Just like quarterback has to figure out where the lane is going to be to throw the ball, we find out where the lanes are going to be to run the ball. 
Yeah. Um, I don't I don't know um, if you saw the games this weekend, but let's move on to this weekend's game a little bit. Um, how, how you expect it to go? Let me tell you something. I always expect Ole Miss to beat Alabama. Hey, let me tell you. If we can protect the ball and them land sharks come out to play, baby. If them land sharks come out to play. You know what? When, when Ole Miss beat Alabama, I was in Canada – uh, that year where they won back to back championships and uh we 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 uh beat them I think we beat them at home. And uh uh when uh, I think I forget who it was caught the interception in the end zone to secure the victory. I was Six in Canada points. I yeah. was in Canada and yeah. it was snowing outside. I was so happy and I was watching the game I had no shirt on and me and my me, me, me and my daughter my daughter was sitting there she's watching the game with me and I'm and soon as we got that interception I went out and ate it below Canada with no shirt on, no shoes, and was running down the street. Now, mind you, I lived in a very nice, rich neighborhood, and they did not know how to react with a black man half naked running down the street. Okay? So what they did, some people called the police. I had to do some explaining, but you know what I mean? It, 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 once, they, once, they, once they found out who I was, it was okay. Yeah, I don't care. Well, the next time, put some clothes on. I said I didn't have time because my adrenaline was on another level. I said because Ole Miss just beat Alabama, <laughs> so I expected I expected to be uh, pretty tight in the beginning. But I think if uh, they just stay consistent uh, and protect the ball, I, Alabama Alabama is very beatable. We, we've seen it already. Mm -hmm. um, Tennessee actually didn't take care of the ball that well, and most of their guys were hurt, and they still pulled out that victory. Um, I think we yeah we just stay um, disciplined and um, consistent, and we'll get this dub. We'll get the dub. Yeah, I, I I tell people all the time, don't go out there and lose to the logo because Alabama beat so many teams even before the ball is kicked off. Just play the team that statistically Listen, they are. Mentality mentality will win you more games than ability. Mm -hmm. Okay, I remember uh, as my junior year, we were playing um, LSU at home. And LSU was beating the brakes off of us. I wasn't playing. I wasn't starting at running back because we had Artie Moore. Artie mm -hmm. Moore was a starter, and I was trying to get, get myself in that starting role. And I was so upset that I wasn't touching the ball. And I, and, and that's what I said. I talked to um, uh, Ben and Wall Hill, Ben Craddock and Wall Hill. I said, hey, when they kick this ball, if I touch it, I'm going to the house. And the way they looked at me like, you're damn right. I was like, okay, mm. calm down. <laughs> You're scaring me. You know, <laughs> it was scaring me. And so they kicked the ball, and I got a shot at it, and I took it 100 yards to the house. That's the only points we scored that game. You know what mm. I mean? But to me, even watching those young guys like Wall Hill and Ben Graddick uh, and, you know, Deuce McCallis, they came in, and they were able to feed off that mentality we had. Because, you know, guys like uh, me, Stuart Patrick, uh, Johnny Jones, you know what I mean? Like mm. some of those guys that were seniors, Andre Rohn, like we didn't care who you were. You know, you better come to play. Nobody told us we were supposed to win two games. Mm. And if they did, I wasn't listening. I will tell you something else would happen. And and this is this is a true story. If you don't believe me, you asked Eli Andy. That's my boy. Ask Eli Andy. <laughs> ask Walker Jones. We were in a meeting. And Coach Tuberville had this phrase he would go. He would say, well, guys, this is not a game that we have to win. So, let me change it. Go out and play hard. And so we had got – Beat twice, and he had made that speech. And so he said that in, into the team meeting. Now, I'm a very respectful uh, young man, and I would never want to disrespect my head coach and, you know, and, like, cause any problems. But to me, I felt that it was important for me to say something then because if these guys were going to feed off my mentality, I said it has to be said now. And I told Tuberville, I said, hey, coach, every time you said that, we've lost. I do not want to hear that come out of your mouth anymore. And I remember Eli turned around, looked at me like the exorcist, like, what the hell? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, but I had to say that in front of the team to let them know that I'm not here to lose. I, I came to play. You know what I mean? And I'm going to put, put that helmet on and, um, and, and go to war. Yeah, you had a bunch of guys like that. Matt Luke was on that team playing center, yeah, 250 pounds. I, and, you know, I, don't, I apologize when I don't uh, mention I, it's hard for me to go through the whole team. You yeah. know what I mean? Because – we were we, literally our mentality. We helped. We 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 like we built each other up. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I seen Matt Luke um, being held together with duct tape, playing. You know what I'm saying? Him and uh, him and Kitchens. 
Uh, them guys have been held together with duct tape. You know, we and then we had those young guys that came in and feed off that energy, like uh, Terrence Metcalf, big mm -hmm. big Metcalf, and, and Kendrick Vincent. You know what I'm saying? And then we had the the world's tallest version of Superman, Todd Wade. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Todd Wade will come out there and just literally push people. People don't know this. Todd Wade was my babysitter when I was in college, and I had my son, and I had to go to. I'm serious. Todd Wade, you, I, I, I get phone calls from Todd Wade like, hey, hey, come over here and get this, get this kid, man. He's drinking up everything in the house. You know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, but you know, those, the, we were like, we were really family, man. We were really family, and um, but we were family with a mission, and our mission was to go out and destroy everybody that talked down about Ole Miss. In, in the conference, everybody that looked at us like we were the, door, the doormats, we were, we were coming to whoop that butt, and that's what we did. Yeah. I tell people all the time, everybody says, when did this run start? And I'm like, uh, you guys, none of this happens without you guys. None of it. Everybody's like points wants to point at Eli. They want to point at like Shea Hot and all those guys. None of it happens without 97. Listen, listen man, two-time two time Reyes. Two time Reyes, my other my other my other garden angel, even two time, um, mm -hmm. would always laugh at me how fired up I would get. And I'd be like, hey, everybody hit somebody. I said, it's not this is mm -hmm. this is the most violent sport in the world. If you're not hitting anybody when that ball snaps, I said, then you're cheating us. You're cheating us. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like we had when I I'm, when when Tabor's Fisher, Tabor Fisher and those guys were there, I think because because they were used to a certain tone. Of, of not of not like really being that that at that level um you know it, I, I felt like they were just it was okay they felt like it was okay as long as they we just showed up and played you know what i'm saying and mm. towards this was a great talent too but um i know that uh derrick jones and mark smith and those guys like i really connected with those guys when i came down there um i mean they they helped secure getting me signed by Ole miss and um and the, the biggest the biggest thing was uh, a guy that that saw me do one run play and said I found my running back and that was uh the great George Smith from mm -hmm. Northwest Mississippi Community College the best offensive coordinator in the history of football was George Smith I mean they, I was sitting in two -a days and not being able to get any reps because there was so many guys trying to take my job mm -hmm. Coach Smith threw me in there he said I, you got to show me something. Because he hadn't seen me run yet. All they saw was a highlight film of one game, and they said, this kid, uh, he, he must have been playing guys that were standing still and picking their nose, right? So mm -hmm. he gets me out there, gives me a toss play. I make a couple guys miss, and then I go to the house. I come back. Coach Smith never took off his glasses. I come back, I come back across the practice field. He's got his glasses up over his head. He turns around and looks at all those guys that were trying to get the running back job and says, mm -hmm. hey, I found my running back. You guys go find something to do. <laughs> Just like that, George Smith, and I love George Smith. He's like he's like a father to me, man. I really, mm. um, those guys that really mentored me and uh, made me better. Uh, George Smith uh, started it. Um, Eddie Grand finished it. That is one. I thought he was Italian because he was so angry. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, Eddie Grand. I said, I, I, I thought Eddie Grand was Italian, man, because uh, you know he had, he had Coach Bonanzio, Noah Mazzoni. I thought I thought he was Italian. <laughs> and come find out, he was just an angry little white guy. You know what I'm but he, uh, but those guys, uh, really, really, they they, they helped uh, finish what Coach Smith started, man. And, but um, I thought George Smith was gonna gonna be the offense coordinator when I came to Ole Miss. That's really mm -hmm. why I came, because I thought uh, um I was gonna keep being coached by him. Me and Andre were like, man, Coach Coach Smith about to, we about to light it up. And so when because he wasn't the offense coordinator, we had to take uh, what he taught us as far as that mentality of winning and bring it to the sip. And as we did, baby, we brought it to the ship. And we got busy, baby. We got busy. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, before we get out of here, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you about Jay Avery, your nephew, who's over hey. in Asheville. He's making some ways. I see some resemblance. Talk a little bit about Jay. Jay, <laughs> Jay is probably, you know what he is? He's a hybrid of mm -hmm. uh, Deuce McAllister and John Avery. He's a, he's a, he's a hybrid. The kid has the size, speed. He, he can play receiver and running back. I like him better running back um, for obvious reasons. But um, I think that um, when uh, they get a chance to really look at him, they'll say this this kid has exactly what we need to take this team to the next level and keep us there. You know, when I look at his video, whenever I watch what was going on, I see him as a slot receiver. Yeah, honestly. listen, yeah. but he can do, 
because he's such a good kid, he's coachable. Mm-hmm. He's got a 3.5, 3.6 GPA. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. like, um, COVID has really, really uh, uh, not given everybody a level playing field as far as uh, when COVID came in. The kids, and he's only been playing like three or four years of football. Mm-hmm. And he looks, he looks, he looks, looks better than me at that age. You know what I mean? He's like a lot more physical, um, but he he listens. I mean, I, I've seen him. I've, I've I've taught, I've told him certain things, and he's done certain things. And I'm watch, I watch the way he accelerates after he makes people miss. That's the thing I'm looking at. It looks just like the. I saw, I, I showed George Smith. And he mm. said, the film don't lie. He said, man, mm. he looks just like you. That's what Coach Smith said. And I said, well, if he looks like me, then we need to get him in an Ole Miss uniform. Yeah, seriously. Um, I know Lane Kiffin and the Ole Miss staff, they recruit, like I told you, they recruit a little bit differently. And it's kind of changed since, changed since we were um, a little bit in that age group. But, you know, I mean. You know what? what, what, what um, the, the way this that, that, that the whole Ole Miss um, thing got turned around is the way that Tommy Tuberville and those guys recruited. Mm-hmm. Um, Eddie Grand was at every home game when I was at Northwest. He was down there. I thought he was on the team. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, what, what position does this guy play? Like uh, him, Coach Knox, all the, those guys really hit the road and went to see guys. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. They, 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 they really did some serious recruiting. They did a great job. And I think that's kind of missing everything. Everybody's like an uh, armchair recruiter now, a mm-hmm. scout, armchair scouts. You know they're, they're, they're sitting there with their um, computers and their phones. Instead, but these guys, they went out on the road and they got to see it up close and got to see all the intricate details of a kid's personality and everything. You can't see that when um, you're looking on um, uh, Huddle or anything like that. I mean, Huddle's good, but at the same time, if you don't have anybody that can uh, really vouch for kids that know something about speed, that know something about vision, that know something about um, creativity, know something about heart and mentality, then uh, that, that, that's, that, that, um, that uh, remote control or that... Uh, Cell phone is not going to help. Yeah, seriously, you do see the resemblance when you watch him play. I look and looking at his videos. I, I look forward for his end of the year highlights to come out as well. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I will absolutely retweet that out as well. But anyway, hey, John, thank you that. so much for right. coming on the show. This was a blast, man. Um, I hope you and your have a yours have a good time and get everything going. And ho- hopefully, yeah, we can take it. care of the tie hey, this weekend, brother. Nothing else matters this week but beating Alabama. You know what I'm no. saying? Nothing. I don't. I, I, I don't even want to hear my favorite song. You know what I mean? I'm putting everything on mute because I all I want to see is Ole Miss beat Alabama. And if any of them win, I, I'm I'm still I'm still red, white, and blue until I die, baby. It's hotty totty. Yeah, appreciate it, man. And um, hopefully we can have you back soon, man. All right, absolutely. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. You're doing an awesome job, Steve. We appreciate you, man. The Sip loves you, brother. All right, thanks, John. All right.